Well, I'm delighted to be joined now live by Jim Chalmers from Stork Technical Services. Uh, I've known this man a little while. I think you're one of the characters of the North Sea oil and gas industry. In, yeah. And yeah. I'm putting it kindly. Yeah. Um, we were hearing your presentation there when you were really taking us through kind of overview of all your years. 25, 30 years? Yeah, nearly 40 years, Kirsten, in the oil industry. And over that time, my goodness, the changes you must have seen. Massive changes. I started in the industry in 1976, first went off to the Brent Bravo, then I went on to the Oak Alpha, and I joined Rigblast, as it was known then, in 1978. In the early days, it was all hustle and bustle, but there's been a lot of changes since that time, you know. A, going back to 78, you went offshore, all you get was a pair of coveralls, a hard hat and a pair of boots. Safety was non-existent, non-existent, you know. Since Piper Alpha, which is sad to say, it, it was a blessing for a lot of us in that time because we've all sort of gained from that, you know. Uh, safety, you now, first thing you think about, uh, toolbox talks, risk assessments, competencies, people's behaviours, you know. All these things come into the equation now before you even get, get offshore, you know. And I think that operators and all, all the operating companies and the contractors have all worked together to get a better, safer environment for everyone, because they really have. You were saying to me earlier that um, you, think you were here at the very first offshore Europe. What was that yes. like? It was different. Uh, you still couldn't have parked your car here because there wasn't a, it wasn't a dual car as you from King Street all the way out, you know. I think it was 1975 or 76, I can't remember the exact year. But it was obviously smaller. And at that time, everybody thought it might be one, two offshore Europe's. Here we are 30 odd years later and we're still having them, you know. Much, much bigger, much, much bigger to a wider audience. It's now worldwide. It's worldwide. And I can honestly, when I went to Houston in, with Stark in 1999, we actually attended and had a stall at OTC in that, uh, 2001. And again, it's bigger than this, but fantastic. And to see so many old faces for me is wonderful as well. Having been in the business so long, it's a lot of, a lot of faces I haven't seen for quite some time. And it's good to see them, like yourself, you know. <laughs> oh, I don't know about yeah. that. But of course, the, the challenges that the industry faces at the moment, um, industry has faced challenges in all the years that yeah. you've been involved with it but there's something about this one that feels different it's got people in a panic yeah. can you take a more balanced overview of it now because you've been around the industry yeah. for so long this is probably the fourth sort of downturn i've seen the first one was the mid 80s 86 all the oil was nine dollars a barrel and at that time we had a lot of sort of americans over here dutch guys norwegians at that time the old sold that we moved off and we thought then the oil boom had burst we thought it burst forever you know we were lucky we got work down south in uh, the gas fields down there with rig blast but we carried on and it picked up again again there's been two or three since that time this is probably the worst one i have saw uh, but i think it's due to the world economy it's not just due to the price of oil i think it's the world economy you've got all this situation with syria which isn't helping you've got all these refugees and people have taken their eye off the ball for the oil industry and i think governments need to put in a bit more we're talking about decommissioning, and there's still a long way to go. There's still 23 billion barrels of gas and oil equivalent to be extracted. And if we get the technology and get the cost base right, we can still go ahead for another 30 to 40 years. We really can. You and know. when Serene Wood is saying that as well, just last week, uh, reiterating the importance of, of good, strong 20 to 30 years yeah. left of the industry, and certainly in this part of the world, um, that can't be wrong. No, I mean, he knows more about the oil industry than I'll ever know in, 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 in industrialists like he would say in that. But it is a case of the UK, the businesses in the UK getting their costs down. And everyone needs to realise that. Oil is a very cheap commodity in other parts of the world to extract. Here it is very expensive. But there's ways and means in doing it. I'll go back to the Mariner field. We're involved with Mariner. And when that Mariner was discovered about 15 to 20 years ago, but it was a heavy type of oil, so it was difficult to extract at that time. It wouldn't have been viable. Obviously with technology and the way we've come forward with different ideas, it's now possible to extract that at a viable cost for everyone. And there'll be other fields there that we'll be finding today and tomorrow that will sort of continue to develop in 15 to 20 years time. You know? And it is about, it's about investment, it's about also people taking a risk. To get oil at the ground you need to take a risk and, and a lot of these big businessmen are risk takers. But if there's something at the end of it, they will take that risk, you know. Thank you very much. I'm sure we could talk for a long, long yeah. time. I'll maybe do that a bit off camera, but thanks just now. Okay, Kirsten, thank again. you. Thanks very much. See thanks you soon. Thanks for joining bye -bye. us. Bye -bye.